Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Dr. Catherine Horton. With me today is both uh, Bill Binney and Dr. Millicent Black. And what we would like to do today is actually update everybody about the Dr. Millicent Black's case. She has uh, been a, a, a member of the old Techno Crime Fighters Forum. She's reported about her case for a year and a half. So you can all go back online and find lots and lots of information about her case. And um, I, I really encourage everybody to do that. There's lots of information out there online and her targeting case is one of the best documented cases. She has medical evidence of both the, um, the implants, she has measurements of the implants. She also has medical evidence of the damage done to her body with these directed energy weapons as part of the targeting program. And it is extremely important that people uh, read up about it because for victims, they know what sort of information they can, uh, evidence they can get. And for those people who still learn about targeting, they can find out what this, basically this genocide program actually involves. So without further ado, I would like to pass the microphone over to my, uh, to Millicent so that she, she tells us what she has been uh, up to. Oh, one more thing. You can also find an interview with her from about a year ago on my channel. Look it up under videos and then you can follow her case um, better. But now over to Millicent. Thank you so much for coming on, Millicent. How are you? Hello, everyone, and happy holidays to each of you. Catherine, thanks so much for taking your time to be uh, with me today, let me be with you actually, and to Mr. Benny High again. Nope. I just wanted to, to report some of the uh, reports of damage that I've gotten, additional damage or increasing damage that I've gotten to my body as a result of the presence of the uh, nanotechnology and, and microchips in my body, in my joints in particular. I've been trying to obtain um, medical attention for the pain and the swelling that persists in my right leg uh, since the surgery, the second knee replacement or revision that I had in 2018. And uh, so I went to a doctor that was kind of specializing in stem cell research and he did x-rays of my uh, upper and lower body and the report wasn't good. He said, well, if you could have gotten to me way sooner, I might be able to do you some good. However, he pulled my x-rays up on the screen and showed me my shoulder is, she literally separating here. So that this, this top bone is no longer attached actually to the, um, to the round bone, to the ball joint. And the ball joint is flat like coming up, literally it's no longer this way. It's got some flattened area there. Um, I was, it was suggested to me, I guess early in, in this year that I would need a shoulder replacement. And so it's becoming increasingly clear to me that one of the things that I've been being used for has been joint replacement surgery. And you all know that in, whenever they're using artificial joints, they are also uh, outfitting them with microchips. Something that's quite frustrating about those chips, whether they're in the joint or in the muscle, is that they can be used to manipulate the body. And so I can be struck in the back of my knee and be made to almost fall or struck in the middle of my thigh and, and experience excruciating pain. Right now, I can't raise my arm. This is all I can do. And notice that my joint isn't working at all. When I try to raise my arm, the whole thing goes up. Um, that's how badly damaged that the shoulder bone and the, and the ball joint is right now. I can assure you that all this is being done to me deliberately, um, perhaps with the expectation that I will have surgery that will allow them to put artificial joints in me that is possibly under experimentation. If they are not under experimentation, then it would just further the research on me as a quote unquote bionic woman. Um, both hips, hip joints are now compromised as a result of, of chips that I know are, are in them. Um, I am experiencing excruciating pain that oscillates around my groin area, just as Melinda Kitter's biofeedback um, no, body scan in the case. I found out that the oscillating chips, Mr. Benny, you may can help me, is one that goes 
around in a circle. Is that it? That they go from side to side? You're, you're on mute. It may just vibrate back and forth a little bit and not go all the way around or something. It's uh, that kind of oscillation might not be a full. Okay. okay. That's all. Okay. Well, in 2011, I believe, uh, I spoke with a scientist at the FCC and he was telling me, I told him what was happening to me and that it was a, you know, a personal relationship who I believe was doing this to me, who was retired from the, from the Air Force. And he said to me, well, I know they use high powered microwaves. And he told me to look around my area and see where they might could be directing that at me from. And then he said, and, and, and they use oscillating too. So he wasn't specific about that, but once I read the uh, Kitter report and there are at least three places in that report where they're oscillating chips that have been uh, put in my body, meaning that I guess the, the intention is to do damage from side to side or something of that nature. And also um, my knees. There's been some uh, what explicit attention to my left knee that is still the original knee replacement that I had in 2002, and it has not been giving me any trouble. I've been actually it's held up really well, especially since I had the, the uh, second revision on my right leg. But now it's beginning to give me difficulty only when I am uh, tortured, and that is generally while I'm in bed. So during the night, I am, my, my joints are being tortured. When I stand to walk to the bathroom or to get up in the morning, I can hardly walk, have to hold on to something to be able to walk. Because while I lay in bed, my joints and my, my thigh and my right leg in particular are being assaulted. They can also be assaulted while I'm attempting to walk across the floor or, or across the parking lot. Uh, he can make it feel like I'm carrying 50 pound weights on my knees in particular. And I know that these are kinds of human effect um, testing that has been done by the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Director because I found documents that relate to it. Also, um, human effects research that is being done at places like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I've also found their documents uh, with their RFPs or uh, requests for proposals attached to them. So this is not experimentation, I don't believe, because it's already been done and that's been done decades ago, not just a few years ago. And there's already documented evidence of the kind of damage that can be done as a result of this type of, of uh, treatment or mistreatment. So you see, my frustration is that my joints are under attack. My joints are under attack deliberately and have been for many years. And the, uh, the result of the pain that can be caused simply by a pain ray is to the, with the intention of getting me into surgery to relieve the pain. And that actually began for me in 2000 with my little toes and me getting the, the middle, middle joint removed from each toe. Uh, the doctor explained to me that the removal of those joints would leave that area spongy and she said you'll never have a coin again. However, by 2008 I was getting coins again and I'm going what's happening and the pain was really bad but it was like somebody was just directing a pain to that area. So 2013 was when I actually was able to uh, go to a podiatrist who did an x-ray, ordered x-rays, and the x-ray came back that the fifth toes were grossly deformed and showed the objects in each toe. So it seemed that the purpose for me having to have that first or that initial toe surgery was indeed to implant some uh, test devices in my body. I did receive a um, report in 2013 from a California toxicologist that indicated that that device in my little toe or my fifth toe was prob 
probably a weather radar related chip. And so wouldn't that be perfect for tracking? Everywhere I went. By 2003, I was being called bionic. I had to sh the, a rotator repair, bilateral knee replacement surgery, bilateral toe. Now y'all notice I'm going from head to toe, right? <laughs> going right on down. And both thumbs in between. So essentially, you know, so you can see that. You can see the joint. Let me tell you that before me, none of my family members have had knee replacements or joint replacements. None of them have been deformed from arthritis. None of them have been diagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis. And neither have I. But a, a body scan done by a private investigator in 2014 found 53 places where chips had been lodged and every single joint in my body has a chip in it. Now, Catherine, I sent to you a copy of a letter that I had written to President Trump. I can bring that up. which I embedded pictures so that he could see as he read the letter what I'm talking about when I talk about the misuse of my human body as I'm bringing it up right Research now. for torture, because that's about all you could uh, you could think that they wanted to do with it, except that all the research has been done that needs to be done. They know how much it takes to break a person. They know how much it takes to destroy the will. Or, you know what I'm saying? To make someone want to ball up in a catatonic state. They know that already. So then this is strictly for sports. In 2003, when the high-tech torture started, uh, I was told by the perpetrator that the boys have new toys. I later found out that new toys were women who were under hypnosis. The, the one Another was, time I was told... Do you want me to share the uh, huh? letter? To, do you want me to share the letter to the president right now? Or do you want, um, want it in the background while you're uh, telling the story? Well, yes. Why don't you scroll up to the pictures and then I can just kind of talk about what they are. Okay. I, I'm going to share the, um, as it is here, um, the letter to, you wrote to the president, right? As you sent it to me. This one, right? Correct. That and is it. it. October 7, 2020. You'll notice that it was sent by certified mail. Yes. This here, the, um, the actual certification. And then... Uh, shall I scroll down to the images? You guide me. How would you like to have scroll this? Down here. Just, just scroll through to the images. I, yeah, scroll mm -hmm. through to the images. Here? You can also, yeah. I, yes. So this is my body scan that shows chips in my muscles, my joints, and also my organs. And when I say my organs, the red mark is the sternum, and, and a chip has been located in my heart. So that I was told by a retired police captain in the case that uh, my heart could be stopped from beating. And obviously it would look like I died of natural death. Uh, on the right side, on the back, that uh, chip or that blue spot there on the right uh, side, midway my back is to my right kidney. That has been confirmed by an x-ray. Notice that it's coming straight down the center of my body, the, the, the blue marks on the left side coming straight down the center. And so that's my spine. They can attack me either from the front or the back. Uh, also the, uh, the left groin, you'll see four places going from the center of my pubic bone over to the left side and multiple ones around both knees. Then all five of my toes on the lower right foot. It picked up one on the left little toe. Again, those little toes where there was surgeries and there is now x-rays that show that there are objects inside them. Our picture is kind of obscuring, but you'll see that there's, there are, are blue circles on each shoulder. 
So that includes that shoulder where now the x-ray will show you that the bone is, is separating and, and the ball joint is flattened. And that is my right shoulder. If you come down on that right side, Catherine, you'll see uh, chips there in that, in that right hip, as well as in the right buttocks. And I was told that that buttock area is uh, the sciatic nerve down the back of the thighs where the hamstrings are. So you see there is there is clear intent to, I was told he wanted to make me lose my leg, have them cut off, and that he also wanted to have my arm cut off. What kind of what kind of, of human effects is this? You know, what Department of Defense could be sponsoring such a project if it's not just a personal vendetta? You'll also see those in my head, uh, one in my forehead, which is a, a, a normal one for I was told that's the area of the head of the uh, brain where hypnosis takes place, and then up in the top of the head is one that. Richard Lighthouse says it's, it's the area of the brain that the um, NSA follows people. You want to scroll down to the uh, to the next one, but notice that these pictures are embedded within this letter to President Trump, so that he can see what I'm talking about when I tell him the kind of of torture I am being forced through and what is happening to me in such a painful way. That big hump on that elbow, uh, I was in Dayton, Ohio. I was awakened one morning and I, as I was being awakened, I felt something being forced into the joint of that elbow. It was excruciatingly painful. Oh, some of the most horrible pain I've ever felt before. Another time that I felt that pain, I was awakened in, in, in Columbia, Tennessee, in bed in the middle of the night, felt something being forced into the center of my right shoulder. So you can see that that, that hump is what came up as a result of that object being uh, lodged in my, my left elbow. And notice that burn spot here. He, he, Catherine, can you put your uh, marker on that, that area right in here, right in there? Can you notice? How, yeah. You see how that, that's the right, yeah, right. Nevertheless, I'm not sure what that place is on my arm there, but it was, it's some of their markings, I can assure you. And all of those brown, brown spots are radiation burn just from being assaulted. You can scroll on down. This is of significant importance because this is the result of a nuclear bone scan that was that I had in uh, 2019, um, just two years after I had had the bone revision, and I was, I've had swelling in this leg ever since. It is like one and a third time, this thigh is one and a third time larger than the left leg. Notice the, uh, on, the, on the left side, that entire area is darkened. So it'll be your right then, the long, long part of the femur bone. Yeah, that entire area. So the soft tissue is also as inflamed as is the, the joint. And that's from being tortured. That's from, I mean, from being heated. There is a titanium rod in my thigh. And that just makes me a, a sitting duck. And it's not just in the thigh, y'all. It's up inside the bone. It's inside my femur bone. Now, if you go over to the opposite side, you see the knees in particular around right around the joint areas. There's no joints there. It's just metal. So then all of that inflammation is coming from the assaults that I'm having while I am trying to walk or laying in bed or sitting. I'm still getting up and being stiffened. The only time it goes away is when I'm having physical therapy. And since I've had the surgery on the right leg, I've had to have physical therapy five times. 
just to regain strength in the in the thigh muscle that is lost from being assaulted with directed energy weapons. So you see the extreme expense that's involved in just fighting to maintain mobility from the cruelty of having your body invaded with We could almost call those that nanotechnology directed energy weapons, can't we? You want to scroll on up to the next one? This is a, some of the early pictures from like uh, 2003, 4, 5. This, this one over on the far, uh, I guess that would be your far left where that split is. Yes, that was found just within days of the uh, uh, indication that the high tech torture had started. I don't know where it came from. I never had a bandage on it, never had to stitch it up. But notice all those burns around it, all those darkened spots around it. That's, uh, that's just under my belly, on the lower side of my belly. My youngest daughter told me, Mom, I had that happen to me when I was in college. That was one clue that she was being uh, assaulted while in college. Third to, third to the right from there is, is a laser scratch. And then go down to the uh, the picture down below it in the center. That's, that was the crown of my head with, with the hair gone from being tracked, I assume. Then over in the, on this far left side, these of scratches coming straight down the back of my of my back. Yeah, I couldn't do that myself because I can't scratch myself down. But they were just all across the back, uh, just found there like that. And I believe that the perpetrators were just trying to show me all the things that they could do. Over in the far right picture where you I've got that circle. Yes, that's actually to indicate the scar that was left on my left breast when they put the chip in my heart. That has been confirmed by a, 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 nuclear, ca a nuclear cast scan that there is something in there, in my heart. The left basal wall is where it was described. The scar itself was identified and certified by a medical doctor who is also an electrical engineer. What he said is you can see where they started the the uh, incision, he says they start in a, in a curve or in a, a bend where there's already, you know, you can't really see any, any difference. He said, but when they went over onto your left breast, that's when they went off and the, the scar is clearly seen. So he actually drew that also, and you'll see that in a picture down below. That was 2008 that they went into my breast and left something there. So this is what my, my, uh, my right bone looked like before I had the revision done. Notice the, uh, the way that, that the bone was shaved away from the prosthesis there. That's what made me have to have some amputation done. Then the right side is what the prosthesis looks like now. It's literally inside the bone and going halfway up my thigh. The problem that I'm having now is that um, it's moving up. The prosthesis is moving up into the into the thigh bone, which is making the leg appear shorter, and I'm walking with a limp. So now the limp is hurting my left hip and my left left leg. Um, but it also seems that electronically my hip can be adjusted so that I'm also, it gives me a deeper limp and it causes more pain. You can move up to the, and this is, the right one is what's needing to be done again. So they're wanting now to take, yeah, take that out and put another one in. And, at, you know, I asked the, the surgeon, I said, but can you guarantee me that it's not going to do it again? And he said, no. Well, that makes it a little difficult. But notice that it's not just going up into my femur, but also going down into my tibia. Uh, so I've got a lot of metal in my body, and it's a result of directed energy assault to my joints. 
you can move on down. So this is that shoulder. The, the, the bottom, okay, the top one shows how the, the bone, the top bone is going across there. And you can see that the flattening at the top of the, round, of the uh, ball joint. Captain, can you see that right inside the red scar? Yeah, that area. You can see that the top bone better when you come down and look at the second uh, red circle. Right. Notice the top of it and how it just seems, looks like they just cut a chunk out of it. It doesn't quite look like that now, but what you can see clearly is that it does not even match or meet the uh, ball joint. You can scroll on down. Oh, that's what my spine looks like after having been seared hour after hour after hour. Anytime I'm in the car traveling, he'll begin to heat my back right there in the center. And so it's all shriveled up and, and obviously damaged. That's just a closer look at on the left side, a closer look at that ball joint. See how it's all chopped off? Mr. Benny, can that be normal? You're muted. You're still muted. I'm muted. Here, not to my knowledge, I've not seen anything like that. So I'm not a doctor either, so. Right. <clears throat> well, they admit that that's not usual. So, but they can't take the bone off, but they, uh -huh. A shoulder replacement would include taking that, I guess taking the joint, I'm not sure. My poor mother at 85 years old has had to have both of her shoulders done. I do believe my mother is a target. They would, My brother would not let me take her to be scanned when I was, um, when Melinda was, was operating the first time. I wanted that so much. I believe the same person that is targeting me is also targeting her. In fact, she may have had some personal contact from him and heard from his mouth some of the things that he had planned, which was not to do me this way, but actually to give me my life back after a certain period of time. And she now has severe, uh, what appears to be dementia, but her whole crown of her head, Mr. Benny, looks just like yours. And a, only she's got burns all on her, scar on her scalp, all on her scalp. There are burns. I've taken pictures of her head. And... Um, a pharmacist told me that she's got brain damage in her hypocompetence. But they're, they're, they're passing it off as dementia. One thing I would like to comment on here is when we show this, the shoulder structure, I mean, the question is here, they didn't operate on you. They didn't go in. This was just pure directed energy weapons from outside smashing Correct. up the bone. And this is one thing that people need to realize when you keep being battered with directed energy weapons, it basically pulverizes the bone, okay? It just like smashes it up into small, small pieces. And then I don't know what the hell happens to it because if it would be small shards, the body should calcify it, but this is literally just pulverized and gone, right? Now, when you had up here, when they first, um, let me go back to that image. When they first, uh, put this in, they amputated bits of your bone and they told you that it had turned mushy. Isn't that right? Can you remind us what happened there? That's right. The surgeon told me that it was mushy when he, uh, he said when he first made the incision that there was clear liquid flowing out of my leg. So that indicates that they've got this chip in me that is allowing them to pump fluid onto me, which is used to make you gain weight, but it's also used to make you swell up. And if in the lungs, it could be used to give you pneumonia or COVID. Yeah. The next thing was that, yes, he said the bone was mushy. And so um, he sent tissue samples and bone samples to the laboratory. 
in the pathology report, I do have come, came back saying that there was foreign material in my bone and in my tissue. Did they identify what foreign material it was? No, they didn't. And I kept trying to get them to be specific about that and, and got the runaround. One told me, the, the pathologist told me to ask the doctor, the doctor told me to ask the pathologist. So neither of them would ever say. Yeah, yeah, I have to say this is typical for all the targeting cases. The doctors are instrumental in this and they, they lie, they falsify data and they block victims. But I also want victims to know that these are crimes against humanity. So the, the doctors are on the hook as well. They have to actually do the utmost to help the victims, but they do not. So now if you look at the, the back side of the bone on the right side, you'll notice that same kind of shaving right there, but then also on the back side. Notice how it's, it's, it's losing its roundedness. Yeah, and if you go, yeah. And, and go up a little bit. Notice that it's, 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 it's kind of being, yeah, there. See that? It's, it's being shaved. And there's no telling what it looks like now. But this has to be some of the cruelty that uh, Dennis Kucinich, the U.S. representative from Ohio, Dennis Kucinich, was trying to warn uh, Congress about. And when the, he tried to get Congress to pass uh, the bill, H.R. 2977, I believe it was, in 2001, it was called the Space Preservation Act. He was telling them of different things that could be done to even the human body from space, including murder. I know he, he said that life could be, uh, health and life could be changed. If you'll scroll up a little bit, Catherine, you may see that part of it. Yeah, there it is. Um, chemtrails, high altitude, low frequency weapon systems, Plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, ultrasonic weapons, laser weapons systems, strategic theater, uh, tactical and extraterrestrial weapons, and chemical, biological, environmental, climate, and tectonic weapons. Go on down to the next page and let's see if I, I guess I, I did not put that there, but he was very specific. It's important that you see this picture on the left. That big black area is my pubic area. It gets locked on to when I'm driving or when I'm sitting in a particular position. And y'all, it, it, it's just some of the most painful. So you see, I just have pain after pain after pain. Um, but it's intentional. And there is a chip in there that, that was shown in the Kitter scan in that area, which means that there was a determination to target me in that area. I just would like to put in a supporting evidence that I have a dermatologist scan and it, there's a big visible scar in my pubic area as well. Um, so, and, and actually the implanting of genitals in the genital area is the top number one aspect of this targeting program, which also includes prolific remote controlled rape. So this is, this is not to fight terrorists. This is a rape and mutilation torture program. And uh, pretty much everybody is implanted the same way. So I completely understand. I, com I have exactly the same thing. Those pictures on the right are just more uh, pictures of, my, of the tissue in my thigh. That is a nuclear bone scan, as is the one on the left. But it, it shows inflammation. So all of the dark areas is indicating where there's inflammation in my, in my body. Why would there be inflammation in, in the tissue, in, my, in the muscles of my leg? That inflammation could also be called, called that fluid that they're able to pump into us and make us swell up. Oh, this is, I, I think I may have shared this one before, but these are the terms that are used to identify chips, y'all. Uh, my, my, even a medical doctor, my medical doctor says, when the body detects a foreign object, 
The first thing it does is form tissue around it to try and, and contain it. She said, and the longer it stays there, it calcifies. So she said the calcified, like the bladder and the calcified stone in the bladder, then the lung base, it has granulomatous disease and scattered scarring. Why is there scarring in my lungs? I'm not a smoker. That's, that's line two. Go back up to uh, under the bladder, Catherine. So that's the bladder. Then the next line down, right, that's the lung base. Uh, the gallbladder is next. It has an oval calcified stone. Then you go down to the spleen. Why? Scattered calcified granuloma. Why is there classified, where, where calcified anything in my spleen? Then you go on down. It says the, uh, what, the vasculature. Uh, that's, it says aorta. Mild scattered calcified plaque. In the intrahepatic, which is my liver, um, I think it says it's unchanged. In my bowel, small calcification in the posterior, superior gastric wall. Notice the difference. It says wall, not in the colon, but in the wall. And then under that, where our pictures are, I can't read it, uh, Catherine, but it says acute inflammation with no evidence of acute inflammation. So if what my doctor was telling me is correct, then there are chips all in my organs. Dangerous changes throughout the thoracic and lumbar spine. Degenerative, there are degenerative changes throughout the thoracic and lumbar spine. That's quite a bit for someone who doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. Yeah. And, and the other thing that has to be taken into account, and I, I really, victims have to force their doctors to comment on this in writing, is that even, let's say, somebody has a freak, really rare disease that does something unusual, well, this would affect one organ or one type of symptom. But then to have some other freak symptom whereby your bones vaporize, you know, and just disappear, that is unheard of. And to have all these freak symptoms that are maybe there's something out there that looks like it, usually not quite, right? But having all of those in one person is statistically impossible. So in other words, these are not normal diseases. This is induced and this is an artifact of the weapons and the evidence is literally plastered all across the victim cases. And I do not have one diagnosis that indicates there's anything seriously wrong with me. I have thyroid disease. Um, I, they are calling heart disease because of this abnormal stuff that's here. But that's the same with the thyroid because I can tell you that the doctor calls it, calls it artifacts. Artifacts in my thyroid. Well, the voice box is behind the thyroid. And I do know that there are chips there. Yeah, yeah. And they're usually in, in uh, victim cases. And that's to read out subliminal speech. So when people think in sentences, they don't notice, but their vocal cords shape the, the actual you know sounds without passing air. So you kind of, if you can read out the vibrations of your um, vocal cords, even when there's no air, you're not speaking, they can read out your sub subliminal speech, if you like. And that's how it's done. That's how they can read your thoughts. They actually read the vibrations of your vocal cords and people don't realize they vocalize their thoughts. But that's also what allows the perpetrators, especially those for those of us who are remote neural monitored or, or uh, brain to brain linked to be able to talk in our, in our minds or through our vocal cords to manipulate our vocal cords in ways that would make people think that we're thinking what we aren't thinking or saying what we aren't saying. Yeah, yeah. and it's also the, the effect of forced speech when people say stuff they don't even want to say and they can't help themselves because the currents that are being passed through these chips 
override yeah. the human nervous system. So just as much as people can control your arm, if your arm is implanted and you can't help yourself, you can't take back control over your arm because the chip currents are just too high. You can override any other biological function like that synthetically. So yeah, that is exactly. Yeah. Now this, this was the result of a CT scan that was done in 2018. And when the um, nurse practitioner that read the report told me that everything was fine. He didn't know I had a copy of it. I pulled out this copy of it. I said, what do you mean everything is fine? What's this and this and this and this and this? He said, I just don't understand why they give those things to y'all. Needless to say, I never went back to it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But also everybody has a right to their medical data. In fact, only you have a right to it, really. You know, right. right. If you scroll down to the next little section, I think looks like it's going to be some comments. Hold up there, uh, Catherine. Comments from Dr. James Giordano's uh, YouTube video that's entitled "The Brain Is the Battlefield of the Future," and the transcript was over on the side. And so to show the president, that nothing is sacred, not even our medical records, because Dr. Giordano pointed out that our medical records can be changed. It says here, medical records, subtle information that may change the disposition of whether you're sick or not. Change how you're treated, influence the postures that go to terms to you in terms of insurance care, and I can do that in very subtle and insidious ways. Furthermore, I can do that on a variety of different levels that can affect key individuals so that in fact, your medical record changes so thereby render you incapable or at least invalid to be able to serve in a way of serving, or I can do that on one electric large scale. What he's saying is they can change our medical records or they can withhold information from our testing and test results that can prevent us from getting necessary care that would, you know, that would save our lives or certainly um, change the course of, of prescribed treatment. And he's, he's saying it could be done on a large scale. A, a very good uh, example of that, when I went to get the radiology report on the x-rays on my on my feet the diagnose well the, the, the uh, findings for my little toes was gross and the word gross stuck out in my mind gross deformity when i went back several years later and asked for a copy of it the woman who was pulling that report first pulled something off then she hesitated to give it to me she giggled because I think she heard the perpetrator say, hold on a minute. And then she reprinted it, and that word growth had been changed. But it was important to see that he was reporting that information in our medical records can be, can be changed or altered or, um, or deleted in a way that it will change and alter the way we're treated or even the diagnosis, whether or not we get a, an accurate and, a, and a, a, a appropriate diagnosis. Sorry, sorry, it just briefly, inter in, I would like to interject that also, people don't realize that, but most medical devices like the MRIs, for example, are connected to the, to the computers on, in the hospital over the internet. So the NSA can intercept and basically read out your medical data before your doctors can, if they really want to. And they can inter, you know, interpose anything in between, you know? So that Absolutely. is- Absolutely, it's, it, he says that, he says, I can do it in such a way they're going to be regarded in a negative sense, or I can do it in such a way that I'm going to treat you incorrectly. If I say, for example, do you have a particular allergy or you have particular sensitivities or you have a particular disorder, you will be treated for that and that, and that could then harm your health and your stability in both a short wars approach as well as a long wars approach. That's, this, that's significant. Yeah. yeah. 
that's uh, the finger of a chiropractor who located that object in my jaw. There was one in each side of the jaw. And, and I actually have uh, what's called lesions on the inside of my jaw. So this, so this, that is, hmm? this thing actually, you know what? I, I think Bill will probably have heard um, reports about that. These are implants that are put into the, the teeth. And that is, I think, one of the older implant types. So a lot of social soldier, soldiers had these, you know. Below that is, is the scar that was drawn by the, by the medical doctor who's also an, an electrical engineer. And so he's showing where that the scar comes down here. He actually gives measurements and then it goes over onto my left breast. And then over on the right is, is the result of, of a nuclear bone scan that was done in 2014. Notice that wherever it's, it's bright white, those are places where there's lots of inflammation and also lots of, uh, uh, and also evidence of chips, indications of chips. And notice the pubic bone. A pharmacist looked at that and said, you, should, you shouldn't have any inflammation there. Absolutely. But basically, this is the pattern you get when you're being targeted with direct energy weapons and your, your joints are being targeted. So they're trying to cripple your ankles, your knees. Here, I can see the hips a bit. And then they're also doing sexual assaults. That's the pattern. And it doesn't fit a disease. It only fits the targeting program. And you can also notice that my bones look fairly okay there. Current x-rays of my bones show that they are thinning. I just had a, um, a, bo a bone density test on uh, this past week to confirm or disaffirm whether or not I have osteoporosis. Uh, I don't think I do it. I did not the last time, but my bones are thinning, obviously, in the areas where the chips are and where I am chronically assaulted with directed energy weapons. My hips were in much better condition then too. You can see that that, that hip girdle there, it, it looks a lot better than it does today. I think that, that's all I think. That, I think that, that is it. But you know- um, I did send a copy of that to Mr. Barr since he reports yeah. to the president. I, yeah, I think that the really bad thing is, and I, I think Bill can uh, you know, also confirm that, is that Barr is now turning out to be somebody who doesn't do anything, which I think is uh, you know, direct indication of being in the CIA. Yeah, you have to unmute, you have to unmute, unmute, unmute. You still he, muted. He certainly, he certainly is acting like he's a member of the swamp. Yeah. Do nothing, do nothing swamp. Absolutely. So, I mean, ultimately, and this is um, what I said to uh, Millicent, uh, you know, earlier, is that um, ultimately the, the only thing that people can do is, is launch their own court cases because these, the, the FBI is not going to help you. I think the FBI is major, majorly involved and the police will not help anybody. I, I don't know of a single police investigation into this anywhere in the world, but I know of literally hundreds of cases having been submitted to the police for investigation and yet not a single investigation, not even by accident. So ultimately for us civilians, the only other option is to go launch our court cases. But basically we have to use civilian means to shut down a military program, which past history shows to be highly unsuccessful. So at the end of the day, the only thing that will actually stop this is a military intervention, a military intervention, because these are military weapons being de deployed against Americans and Europeans. So, you know, uh, we can try the court and that's what we're up to, but at some point, you know, the military has to come in and shut down these military psychopathic serial killers who are torturing women to death and men as well, men, men as well and children as well. But I have to say the brutality with which they torture and maim the women is, is off the charts in my personal experience. Absolutely. Well, it's Certainly not the way I expected to spend the last 20 years. Yeah. Um, gratefully, I've 
been able to continue with uh, education and um, trying to have, just being determined to have some semblance of life that is normal, um, but it's surely not without pain. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as today is uh, actually Christmas, and this is something that other people also should realize is that this is Christmas and during Christmas, most people spend their time with their family, you know, uh, in, their, in a loving environment, relaxing, having fun together. And meanwhile, all of us are being tortured, literally all of us, Bill, Millicent and I, we will spend our Christmas being tortured, raped, battered with military weapons and there's a, a, a shift service of military on call and on shift just for the battery of defenseless men and women and children that has to be taken in so your taxpayers dollars and euros uh, go towards the battery of innocent people and you know adults and children on christmas that is yeah. the truth. And this is the truth that America needs to wake up to. And when people understand that, they will understand that the whole coronavirus fraud is basically child's play compared to this. That is basically genocide light that is only deployed if you actually take the vaccine and are stupid enough to buy into this pandemic. But we don't have a choice. We get battered in our home. We get tortured and raped wherever we go. And there's nothing we can do. And there's no hospital I know on planet earth that takes out these chips, but there's a lot of hospitals I know that put them in. So, um, you know. That is true. I had a police officer stand on my porch in 2011 and say to me, uh, when you were um, in that accident, did you have to go to the hospital? And I said, uh, no. He said, well, I know when you go to the hospital, they put chips in you. Yeah. 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 And, and that was, what year was that again? Or roughly what decade? 2011, it was a police sergeant who told me that he had worked with the CIA to do Vietnam, uh, to do uh, LSD experiments on Vietnam veterans. Yeah. yeah. There you go, people. That is the truth. That, that completely tallies with everything I have, um, I have measured. The other thing I wanted to say is that as these victims go into court, the, the really the biggest breakthrough for me personally is um, that over the last couple of years, I did run consulting. I was consulted by, among others, lawyers and doctors and also judges who found that they were implanted. And bit by bit, as I was mapping out how random people could be implanted, I at some point I figure out, figured out that the way the cartel operates is that they experimented on vulnerable people, but their real target was to implant professions of interest. These are politicians, of course, bankers, but they're also judges, especially judges sitting in commercial litigation and high-flying lawyers. So by now, I think that every, all of the judges are implanted, they just don't know it yet. So when they are bouncing off these cases, they just think, oh, well, you know, we can just throw this guy under the bus and this woman under the bus. We don't care about their court case. Let them be tortured. What the judges didn't realize is that these cases were actually about them and about their families. And soon, soon they will find out that they too are implanted. They too are hooked up to this network. So based on my research, I'm very, very confident that, you know, certainly the judges in the higher courts would have all been implanted. I'm pretty certain of that. I actually, in America, read an article in 2005 that said by May of 2005, they expected every person in the United States to be chipped. Yeah, I think so. I think that that was successful. Yeah, I agree. I believe so. But so, I mean, the, the takeaway message today on Christmas is that you have to think about all these targeted individuals, but more importantly, uh, you know, after Christmas, after the Christmas holiday, people have to go out and support um, others like Millicent. And um, I really hope that all of us have a court case in the courts very, very soon. And then I really want everybody to go and go to the court case, support the victims in uh, by being in the public gallery so that the judges can see that this does matter and we will not let these cases go. So unless they actually arrest the criminals who, um, who are doing this, and by the way, the FBI has been notified about these crimes for several decades, over and over, multiple times by the same victim. The FBI knows, the FBI is actually running it. This is why they haven't acted. But the FBI 
knows every single perpetrator because they groomed them, hired them, equipped them, and then deployed them. And the same is also true of branches of the military. Certainly the US Air Force is involved majorly with the drone program. The other thing I would like to say is something that Bill pointed out to me. Do you remember the uh, when Eric Holder was asked about the drone program in the US? Bill, can you tell us about that? What happened? Oh, unmute, unmute, unmute. Yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> it, it was uh, in, it was around the time that uh, shortly after they had uh, droned uh, Aliaki's son, his 16-year-old son, he was a US citizen in, um, in the Middle East, I think he was somewhere. And uh, he was, uh, Eric Holder was being asked by somebody in Congress if he would, if he would, uh, if he was uh, in, in, intending to use drones inside the United States. And would he ever do that? And uh, he refused to answer that question. So, I mean, that tells you uh, <clears throat> that just by not answering, it basically says, yes, they're prepared to use it inside the US. And it certainly appears that they are in fact doing that. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this is why he couldn't answer it, because he would probably be held in what, not contempt of court, but basically lying Perjury. to Congress. Perjury. Yeah. Lying to Congress. Yeah. So, yes, they are using these drones. And um, as I said before, I mean, when Bill and I were taking measurements, we did map out a figure of eight, a, a drone basically above Bill's house. And um, yes, we, we really have to stop it. But I think what, what I, I think I, what everybody needs to realize is that they have to reach out to the military and those people in the military who are involved in draining the deep state and draining the swamp because civilian courts cannot do it by themselves. You know, they have a lot of power, actually. I mean, a court can order the arrest of certain people. The a court can order the confiscation of company uh, computers and company information. But I don't think a court has the power to ground drones that are actively shooting and deployed over communities. There you really need the military to shoot the drones the hell down, unfortunately, or take over the control and ground the drones, but it has to be the military. And this is military equipment that is being deployed against people. These are not handheld little toys anymore. These are weaponized drones. Basically what, what all the victims are saying is that they are stealth drones deployed over people's houses that gun people to death. Now they can vaporize or pulverize your bones with time, but they can also instantly kill you. So it's like having a, a continuously shooting machine gun, silently shooting at somebody, but not quite you yet, but it can hit you in the head at any time. So, you know, this is serious. And at some point the military needs to be, you know, uh, contacted and told that unless they ground these drones, they too have to be court-martialed, you know? I think some US Air Force generals need to be, you know, lined up against a wall by a military tribunal, you know? So. One good thing, Catherine, is even yesterday, I found a letter that had been sent to, uh, I believe, Mr. Trump, it was signed by a, a group, a large group of military uh, commissioned officers, captains and colonels um, speaking out against torture. And so I guess just like in 2004, I was stopped by a police officer and he, you know, got my license and ran my tags and came back and he looked down in, and looked at me in the eye and he said, we're not all bad, sweetie. I know. So I believe that on every, every, every area, every level of government, you're going to find that there are some good people and those good people are against this. Mr. Benny was one. Uh, Karen is one. Um, and many others that are against what's happening to humans. They do want to save humanity. As in the doctors, you know, we've had the, um, those who call themselves the frontliners, the group of doctors who've spoken out about uh, the COVID and the fact that it, it can be cured and, and, you know, those kinds of things. So every, every, on every, every level of, of professionalism as well as humanity, there are good people. And those are the ones who will join us in fighting to save humanity.
I've had multiple doctors to do so. Yeah. yeah. But you know what, Melissa, the one thing I would like to say to everybody, especially because it's Christmas, it's all very nice that the military write letters, but at the end of the day, the taxpayer's money has not gone to the military so that they write nice letters, right? That's right. The taxpayer's money, which you paid, right, which Bill paid, went to the military to actually do some military defense. Now, when there's drones, actively shooting drones over Columbia, Tennessee, I am sorry, a letter to President Trump just so isn't enough. I want a freaking missile or an EMP or a counter drone or a fighter jet, whatever the hell they have and gets the job done, that drone over your house needs to be down. And the guy who's operating the drone or the team need to be in a military tribunal or in a civilian court. I don't even care, but they need to be away from roaming the streets, right? I mean, it, it, is, it is like beyond the joke because one of the things that I'm really getting impatient with is that everybody is pulling their punches. Everybody's writing very nice letters and then they go back to have turkey, you know, at Thanksgiving and some Christmas ham with their families. But I'm sorry, we're so way past nice letters to President Trump. Really, we really are. And when I hear this, that the military wrote another letter, I mean, I'm glad that they can spell English because I started doubting even that, but it's just not good enough. I mean, you know, when they went to Iraq, they weren't exactly writing nice letters to Iraq, were they? So I want to do, I want them to do whatever they did in Iraq and were so absolutely freaking amazing at it. I want them to do it in Columbia, Tennessee, and also around Fort Meade, you know? I really am. But these are, are retired. These are retired military people oh. who may be among those, some of those good people. And I can guarantee you, some of them are targeted today. Yeah. The DOD sure. is not opposed to targeting their own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know. I know. But I, basically, I'm talking to the active duty people because, for example, take um, Bill. Yeah. The NSA people know what happened to, it, to him. The NSA people can access the database and pull out every single person involved in your targeting, Melissa, in Bill's targeting, even in my targeting in Europe. Do they do it? Hell no. Why? Because the NSA pays their mortgage you know, and they are following orders. And I'm, I'm, I just want to say on this Christmas day to all the people at NSA and in the US Air Force, following orders has not been an excuse since the Nuremberg trials, which are basically waiting for these people. And they can do so much more by just lifting a little finger People at NSA and in the US Air Force can achieve so much more than just a bunch of retired guys writing life's letters. And if they could get their ass into gear at any point between now and us dying, it would be nice. Merry Christmas, everybody, that. basically. I would appreciate that. And, yeah. and I'm saying the nasty stuff because I know that neither Bill nor Millicent ever would. So I'm the bad cop here. You know, you can now say them nice Christmas wishes. <laughs> well, no, I, I just wanted to say that it, it is, a, you know, my life has been threatened every single day. When I drive my car, he threatens to blow it up or take the, make the bearing fall off so that the wheel rolls off or to, um, he can push my car out of gear. If it's in drive, he can push it in reverse or neutral. He can kill my engine while I'm driving in traffic. Uh, gee, he, he, he's talked about giving, using the death ray to stop my heart from beating. He constantly is threatening to give me cancer in all those places where all those chips are emitting radiation throughout my body. He wants to have my legs cut off or my arm cut off. I'm talking someone specifically pointing to the places of my body where he wants to see them amputated. And that he, the person talking to me is the one who put the chips in those areas so that he could shoot me there. Yeah. Yeah. And I recognize the, the voice of the person and knows where he lives. I'm subject to walk into any public place and face him and he will know I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah. These are my tax dollars at work. And by the way, in 2012, exactly eight years ago, he bragged that I had made him filthy rich from selling my body yeah. to yeah. be tortured. 
Yeah. And you know what? I just want to say to all these people out there who have the power, who make can make a phone call or actually ground a drone, you know, or do some other stuff. Absolutely. Well, you know, if, if Millicent has to keep going under the torture, facing continuous death threats, then maybe people can get their ass into gear when they only maybe face some dis disciplinary action or raised eyebrow from their manager. You know, can people maybe get some stuff done? You know, I mean, it's, it's just the minimum to ask. Bill, you know the capabilities of NSA. Can they find every single criminal involved in Millicent's case? Uh, they have the relationships of everybody in the world, no matter what they're doing, uh, whatever activity, criminal or not. Yeah. How long do you think it would take NSA people to find out the criminals involved in Millicent's case? Probably uh, with the uh, information that the Millicent can, can provide, uh, probably uh, uh, one or two minutes. Wow. One or two minutes. Okay, so I want everybody to understand the scales we're, deal we're talking about. I, it doesn't take one employee at NSA to work six months on this, right? It really doesn't. In fact, there's the entire, all the emails Millicent mm -hmm. ever sent where she even identified the perpetrator to me and Karen Melty Stewart. You can find his name and then look up his contract with Lockheed Martin, look up his superiors at the Air Force and figure out who the hell is involved in this. It is not hard people. So could you please spend two minutes of your lunch break, perhaps solving this, right? Because at the end of the day, what really gets me is that all these people are paid for counter-terrorism you know, fighting terrorism. If this isn't terrorism, what the hell is? So what else are all these thousands of people at NSA doing? What the hell is the Air Force doing if you can shoot up Columbia, Tennessee, and you can machine gun people to death around Fort Meade, and, and they're what? They're all off on their lunch break for several years or several decades? So what the hell are they actually doing? You know, and this is what I, I would want to say to them. I want to say that since April of this year, we have buried 10 members of my family and only three of them had COVID. And only two of them were 80 or above 70. Let me say above, above 65. One of them was my 33-year-old nephew who was funeralized on a, a four days before the date of the anniversary of his death, who died also in his 30s, both of them from traffic injury. Yeah. The very same kind that I be I am constantly threatened could happen to me. Yeah. At least three of them dropped dead from the very possibly the very same death rate that I'm threatened can traumatize my heart and cause me to drop dead. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. This is since April of this year. In 2011, I had a conversation with a man who worked for the Census Bureau. He was a federal investigator. He told me, he introduced himself as a federal investigator. But he also told me that he had been a commissioned officer in the Air Force. And he said to me, what this guy is doing has been a bald-faced lie. He said, if this was a real investigation, I could have been through in three days. So you're right, Mr. Benny. That was back then. Yep. So, you know, I mean, basically, this this is it, right? The people at NSA, also at the FBI, they have the power to investigate this and have to shut down. The people in the Air Force have the power to shut this down. So all these people, everybody who works for them, they need to get on the case because this is the genocide of the American people. And basically, I, as far as I can tell, what's happening is that this psychopath has been kitted out with all this um, weapons technology. He's training up people in large numbers to then be deployed all across the United States to mass murder people. So it is a US genocide. That is, this is the tip of the iceberg. And most people will basically wake up dead in their beds. You know, they will not even feel years of torture. You know, I, it's it's just so sick. That but was anyway. another thing that I was threatened. Yeah, yeah. That was another thing that I was threatened. He he said he wanted my my youngest daughter to find me dead in bed. Well, I can tell you that I have multiple family members whose young children or grandchildren have they've dropped dead in front of them or they found them dead. It's yeah. crazy. And and. There has been a report to the Mount Pleasant Police Department that this person is dangerous. 
and that my life is in, is in danger. So we do, and it's not just me, obviously it's not just me. I, and I don't ever want it to think, want it to appear that I'm only focusing on myself. I constantly ask, if you want, if anyone in this nation wants to have a county where they can come and investigate sudden murders, and I say sudden murders in, in, instead of sudden death, of, of, of an African-American community, come to Columbia, Tennessee. Come to Murray County, Tennessee. Yeah. There are lo there's lots of evidence here that can be got. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and I also would like if to say- If there's a lawyer that- Sorry. Who's, who's, whose heartstrings has been pulled as you've looked at my pictures and heard my story and would be willing to help me to get into court concerning the horrible things that, that is being done and has been done to me, I have more evidence and more ways that people and organizations can be identified. And I would love to hear you hear from you as well. Yeah. So, um, okay, so in, in wrapping up, because it is Christmas, I am, um, and, and uh, Millicent is a pastor also, I completely hand over the microphone to Millicent for the final words. What is your Christmas message, Millicent? What is your message to the nation? Actually, the message- My Christmas message. Well, the first thing I want to do is invite everyone to our Christmas Eve uh, candlelight service and communion on this evening, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern time, especially for the CI community, we were started for you. The name of our church is Refuge from the Storm Church. And we want you to know that you don't have to spend Christmas Eve alone. Come spend it with us as we celebrate the news, the, the news of the birth of our Savior, as well as the actual uh, time that led, that led to his birth, his death, and his resurrection. We do believe that we have eternal life through Christ Jesus. So that's this evening at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time, the Christmas Eve candlelight service and communion that's being sponsored by Refuge from the Storm Church. We are going to be on Zoom, and we want you to bring your candle and have it ready to be lit, whether it's by electricity, battery, or uh, by match. Uh, and if you want to join us, feel free to contact me at mgrace321 at gmail.com, mgrace321 at gmail.com. Oh, we lost her. Oh gosh, isn't this isn't this typical? Um, her message was interrupted. That is so typical. Like <clears throat> because she was being hacked every single time. Uh, we were on the on the old techno forum for a year and a half. She was hacked every single week. So I'm not sure if Millicent is going to come back. But she did announce where you can uh, where you can see her. Um, and where you can also spend Christmas with her. So um, it's the Refuge from the Storm Church. So please look it up online. As, as she said, it's an online service. Um, I, yes, she, she just dropped out. So unfortunately, we have to finish it, Bill. And um, mm -hmm. all I want to say is that everything that Millicent said, I've seen her evidence. We went through it. It's absolutely legit. She is a target. She's one of the hardest hit, hit targets I've ever seen. Bill is one of the very, very hard hit targets as well. So um, all of these things that she was talking about, amputation of limbs, you know, as you most of you know, Bill is a double amputee. Um, we believe that it was bioweapon attacks that made him lose his legs. So, you know, this stuff is going on and it's now expanding to involve absolutely everybody in the local communities to the highest level of government. And these psychopathic killers really need to be stopped. They absolutely have to be stopped. So I'm sorry that the Christmas um, broadcast is quite so heavy, but then there is a, a genocide running in the US and in Europe, and we need people in the military to shut it the hell down. So thank you so much for listening, everybody. And I hope to see you soon. And I hope you have a good Christmas with your families. Merry Christmas. Enjoy your Christmas. And after Christmas, get to work. Get to work and help us shut this down. Okay. <clears throat> so um, thank you also to Bill. Thank you so much for being on and supporting Millicent and me. And uh, we'll report back to you um, after, after Christmas. So thanks a lot.